The latest evidence that has emerged concerning the Ethiopian Airlines incident yeah, in Ethiopia on March 10th is extremely disturbing. That's my view. And so I want us to put on our thinking caps and examine this alleged evidence a little closer. We are allowed to think, are we not, even if we are not experts. The two pieces of new evidence are of course the jack screw, something called a jack screw, which was found in the wreckage in Ethiopia. And then the second is a source who has already listened in yeah, to the cockpit voice recorder, which records conversation between the pilot and air traffic control. Now, before we examine these two pieces of evidence, I want us to keep something very important at the back of our minds. We have all heard of somebody called a fixer. A fixer fixes a problem, yeah, especially a problem related to a crisis. And so if you're in a large organization, of course I'm not talking about Boeing, yeah, this is just something I want you to keep at the back of your mind, yeah, because anything is possible here. So what a fixer does, yeah, especially if you're a large organization, is that you call them in to fix, to help you fix a crisis. And sometimes fixing this crisis may involve painting or portraying a certain picture to the public. And of course, what you're trying to portray is usually not true. Because the whole idea is to get your client, the organization that has, had it, that has hired you as a fixer, out of their crisis, yeah, reasonably unscathed, yeah, or in the best possible yeah, position. So I want you to keep that at the back of your mind. And then also to remember that the earlier disaster involving a 737 MAX also had evidence being leaked out. Because usually the world over, when an investigation is going on, you don't want to leak out yeah, information before you have concluded the entire investigation. And it's for good reason. Because a small clue here may point in a different direction from where the truth is. In countless uh, investigations, early evidence has ended up being completely contradicted yeah, or pointing in the very opposite direction of what the final report from the final conclusions of the investigators points. You will notice that I've chosen my words very carefully and with good reason, but I hope I've gotten the message across. Now back to the pieces of evidence. Now a jack screw is a type of jack that is operated by turning a lead screw yeah and commonly in an aircraft it is used to raise and lower the horizontal stabilizers of the aircraft at the back the horizontal stabilizers in an aircraft are the ones which determine what direction the aircraft should go yeah if they're at one extreme the nose of the aircraft will be pointed exactly down and if they are at the other extreme, the, the nose of the aircraft will be pointed upwards. And so we have been told that investigators have found the jack screw and it suggests yeah, conclusively that the aircraft was pointed downwards, nose down. Now of course this is not where a pilot would point an aircraft if they are trying to save it. However, we are told this is consistent with the earlier Indonesian accident yeah, involving the same aircraft. And that seems to make a lot of sense. Yeah, because we know that the problem which everybody has been talking about in the Max 8 are the MCAs, Maneuvering Characteristics Augmentation System, which is really software introduced into the system that points the nose of the aircraft down automatically when the aircraft sensors sense a stall. So the assumption here in comparing this to the earlier uh, aircraft accident is that again the pilots were not able to control the MCAs and therefore the aircraft consistently pointed down 
and crashed. And yet, we are told, all the uh, pilots needed to do was to switch off the MCAs and then go back to manual flying. Now, of course, in an earlier video, I told you why that is not necessarily safe. Yeah, uh, if you missed that, you can go back and check on it. There's a link at the top right hand corner of uh, your screens right now. But let's stick to what we're discussing now. And so, if somebody was a fixer, yeah, this is not a bad way to sort out this crisis. Sell the idea that the simple solution was just to simply switch off the MCAs, yeah, and hope that the public will not ask, why were the MCAs there in the first place? Or if they ask, yeah, lose them in technical jargon and tell them this is all complicated, very complex aviation engineering. If you don't get it, it's because it's too complex. Case solved, and we wait for months for the final investigation to come out, yeah, the final report from the investigation to come out. And then the conclusions will be that the pilots were not informed. The pilots, yeah, especially the one in Africa, were not highly skilled enough, had no knowledge. Yet the solution to the crisis, emergency crisis they failed, was staring right at them, right there in front of them. Now, if you'll allow me to think, and if you too can put on your thinking caps, let's go back yeah, to the diagram of the flight path, the last flight path of the ET-302, Ethiopian Airlines. Now, if you look at the diagram, all the, most of the diagram is consistent yeah, with the pilot struggling with the MCAs. The MCAs are pointing the aircraft nose down, and the pilot is pointing the aircraft back up, you know, struggling with the MCAs. And I want to remind you of how these MCAs work. Yeah. If after five seconds, you know, they're on for 10 seconds, and then they give the pilot a relief, they stop. Now, in a small window of opportunity of five seconds, the pilot can then control the aircraft and point it back up, nose up. And if the MCAS is not happy, yeah, after five seconds, it'll come on again. So bearing this in mind, the last part of the graph, the last climb of the airline, would only suggest one thing, yeah, and it is that the MCAs did not work for at least one minute. And within that one minute, the pilot was able to put the aircraft on its last climb. There was no interference during that period, almost a minute. And of course, this was the last climb yeah, the aircraft had before it came nose down. So my simple question is this, why did the MCAs, if they were still on, not kick in during this last climb? Why? There is of course one possibility, yeah, the most obvious, and that is the MCAS was happy. Yeah, that the aircraft was out of danger of stalling, and therefore the software did not kick in. And so, the software allowed the aircraft to climb yeah, for some time, and then finally it reached a point whereby, again, there was a danger, so it kicked in. Now, if this is true, it brings out something very significant and very disturbing. What it tells us is that the sensors were not faulty. Because you remember in the Indonesian case, yeah, we were told that the sensor was faulty. It was giving wrong information. It was showing the software that the aircraft is in danger of stalling. And yet that was not true. And interestingly, the faulty sensor theory has also come up with the Ethiopian Airlines uh, flight crash. Yeah. You remember it is being compared to the Indonesian one? Yeah. People are saying they were very similar. So similar accident, similar problem, yeah, and in that case it was a faulty sensor. Therefore in this case, it must also have been a faulty sensor. So simple solution was to switch off the MCAs. Let me just leave it at that. Yeah, you can leave your comments in the comment area below. Let's think about this together. We are allowed to think, are we not? And also, since we are not experts, we also allow experts to correct us yeah, and point us in the right direction. 
tell us where we are going wrong in our assumptions and in our reasoning. Now we'll go for a brief commercial break. When we come back, we'll handle something that I find even more disturbing. Yeah, that is the information released on the cockpit voice recorder of the last moments of the Ethiopian Airlines Flight ET-302. Don't go away. Welcome back. Now somebody who is close to the investigation on the Ethiopian air crash yeah, has listened to the cockpit voice recorder and they leaked this information from the investigation to one of the most reputable news organizations in the world, Reuters. Now of course a reputable news organization yeah, with a reputation to protect will rarely make mistakes. They will check and double check any information they receive. And therefore, they are much harder to fool yeah, than maybe another news organization. Please bear that in mind. So this source told writers that what was in the cockpit voice recorder was that a voice from the cockpit yeah, of the ill-fated Boeing 737 MAX Ethiopian Airlines requested to climb, requested permission to climb to 14,000 feet. The voice said that the aircraft had a flight control problem. And that is where they wanted to climb. And the voice sounded nervous. I have to repeat that because it's very important. And the voice sounded nervous. Okay, we'll come back to that. Now, the reason why the pilot was request requesting permission to climb is because the higher you are, the more time yeah, you have to make decisions and to save the aircraft. In other words, in most cases, in a crisis, the higher you are up in the air, the better. Now, the writer's source was not familiar with the voice of Captain Yared, yeah, the person who was uh, uh, on the controls of the ill-fated aircraft. But they said only one voice was consistently heard throughout the relevant uh, section of the cockpit voice recorder. And then, no more than two minutes later, the voice from the aircraft came again break break yeah of course this signals that non-urgent communication should cease yeah and uh, of course that meant the pilot was very busy trying to save the situation struggling yeah we have to assume struggling there with the mcas and then the source again says he sounded very scared the voice then requested permission to return to the airport yeah and to turn right because turning left would go to the city, turning right would be back to the airport. And that was the last communication from the pilot. Now I find the part yeah, where the source said that the voice sounded scared a little more than disturbing. Why? The source admits that they were not familiar with the person who was speaking, not familiar with the voice even. And although they were not familiar with the voice, yeah, they were able to come to a conclusion that the voice sounded scared. I find that odd because in other investigations, yeah, in case you didn't know, sometimes those listening to the voice recorder will ask people, other pilots, who are familiar 
yeah, with the pilots who were on that aircraft to join them in listening in. Why? Because they need somebody in the room who was familiar with the individuals uh, involved. These people who are familiar with the pilots yeah, of the particular ill-fitted aircraft yeah, whose voice recorder is being uh, listened to would be in a better position to judge and say what emotions may have been going yeah, through the particular pilot's mind as they spoke because they're familiar with them. But here we are with a case of a source who admits they're not familiar with the person. Yeah? Neither are they familiar with their voice. And yet, they are so quick to pass judgment that they sounded scared. Sounding scared is natural. However, in an investigation, sounding scared implies panic. And of course, somebody who has panicked cannot think straight. Somebody who has panicked is unlikely to make the correct decisions yeah, that would save the aircraft. To me, that would suggest yeah, a source trying to sell us a certain rhetoric in advance. In other words, we're being prepared for a theory yeah, or rather conclusion of pilot error. After all, the pilot sounded scared. The pilot must have panicked. And therefore, later on, if we get evidence that actually the pilot was familiar with the MCAS, which he most probably was, yeah, because after the Indonesian airline uh, accident, Boeing must have spoken to the other uh, operators of the aircraft to inform them of this software yeah, and what to do, how to switch it off. And what is even more interesting in my view are the leakages of the two different uh, information that we've gotten yeah, close to the investigation. If you look at both of them, they already seem to be pointing us in a certain direction very early in the investigation. According to me, it would seem the work of a clever fixer. And it would seem the whole intention yeah, is not to get to the truth. The whole intention is to save an aircraft manufacturer from some very serious allegations. And what makes me even more worried is the fact that uh, not too long ago, about 10 years ago, there were some whistleblowers who worked within Boeing, yeah, who ended up being fired. Why were they fired? Because they pointed to the quality of the parts yeah, being taken from a subcontractor, due common incorporated, yeah, that were being used to put together the 737 NGs, not the MAX, the 737 NGs. And these parts were faulty yeah, and non-conforming, yeah, so that when you put together the aircraft, they didn't fit properly, and therefore they created a danger, according to these whistleblowers. What I find very disturbing is that this is at least one case where this particular manufacturer has been put on the spot yeah, over quality and safety issues to do with the manufacture of the aircraft. And I'm sure you will also find this disturbing. But what I urge you yeah, is to join me and put on your thinking caps yeah, so that when we get new information, we analyze it and we think about it. We don't just swallow it hook, line and sinker. Because I don't think if we do that, we'll be able to get to the truth of what really happened. And if the truth is that it was pilot error, so be it. But let it be the truth. If the truth is that African pilots yeah, are not competent to fly passenger jets, so be it. And let's get them out of uh, aircrafts, commercial aircrafts. And let's have only competent pilots, yeah, as long as that is the truth. On this channel, and I believe I need to make this very clear, we're not interested in pushing any theory. We're not interested in pushing any agenda. We're interested in only one thing, and one thing alone, the truth. Until next time, this is Chris. 
کومه کوچه